about a couple things that came up in this keynote I just did real quick. My whole presentation was on OT and IT convergence using a unified namespace. And the whole, the call to action was centered around digital strategy and common infrastructure. Okay. The, there were four questions that I asked the group that were in, that were watching the keynote addressed. And they are very, four very, very important questions that I ask all OEMs generally. Um, the company that I did this keynote address for is a, a company called Ovesi MDT. They make a product called um, Octoplant, or you may have heard of it as Version Dog. It's called Version Dog. They're based in, I think they're in Germany, but they they make a product that does version control for PLC programs. Okay, most of their implementations are Siemens. It's a very very cool product. Um, it's a product that is generally not integrated. Version control for PLC programs is generally not integrated into uh, IoT infrastructure, although it should be. One of what I was part of what I was saying to these guys was like, you guys think the value in your organization is this product Octoplant that you sell to manufacturers to do version control for their PLC programs. That is literally, and it, it's really cool. I mean, it does diffs and it'll show a diff between what did the program look like in this PLC yesterday versus what it looks like today. Here are the things that were deleted. Here were the things that were added. They're color coded. Okay. What I was saying to them was, you think that this product that people buy from you to do version control is the most valuable thing that your business has. And the irony is it is not. The most valuable commodity in your business is the data that all that software collects. So the, the data that the software collects about how organizations, A, write programs to automate industrial processes, like the actual mechanics of writing the programs, the naming standards that they use, the sequences that they use, um, how do they write a sequencer um, relative to how do they write um, linear discrete logic, right? Um, you know, in, in which applications do they use function blocks, in which applications do they use structure, structured text, in which applications are they using ladder logic? You know, you have you're collecting massive amounts of data across manufacturers on how it is they automate industrial processes, not the intellectual property of how, but the the mechanics of how. Um, and the future of your organization is taking all that incredibly valuable data about where how you're collecting, not just you're also think about this. Version control software, if I have version control software for my PLC programs installed on day one, on the day on the day an OEM installs a PLC or installs a machine on the plant floor, and on day one, I take a snapshot of that program. And over the 10-year life cycle of that, um, that machine on the plant floor, every day I take a snapshot of that program. And I'm able to compare that snapshot with operational realities from other systems. That is incredibly valuable data I could sell back to the machine builder. That's incredibly valuable data that the, the manufacturer could sell back to the machine builder. Think about what it is you would learn from being able to compare that over time. Okay, here was the antecedent, here was the operational reality that caused the technician to go take a look at the PLC code and decide to change from using a timer to a counter with a discrete block and a, and, a, and a latching coil. Like it's incredibly valuable information that is incredible, that's super, super high fidelity. That is, it's 100% accurate. It is by far the most valuable commodity that that organization collects or has. That the data on how PLC programs originate and how they mature over time as a function of operational challenges is so incredibly fucking valuable. It's crazy. And imagine you could share that knowledge across manufacturers. You could share that knowledge to systems integrators. You could share that knowledge with OEMs. And by share, I mean sell on some subscription basis so that for a modest fee, they're supporting the collection of that data, but they're translating that into immense value to the manufacturers themselves. Most people on that call had no, until I said, made that statement, they had never even considered just how valuable that data is. There are a lot of people in that organization. There was a guy, uh, 
Dr. Weckerly, Tim Weckerly, who is, uh, I think he's the chief te technical officer for that company. And there was another guy, Stefan Jesse or Jess, both super smart guys that I had worked with putting together this presentation. Um, they both understand the value of that data that they, and we had conversations about it, but the vast majority of people in the organization don't understand the value of that data. And, and I, I want to ask this question. If you are an OEM or a software developer or solutions provider who makes products using smart technology and all, what is smart again, let's talk about what smart is. It can connect, it, it has connectivity into networks and it can tell you things about itself. That's all smart is. Okay. Um, um, it, it doesn't necessarily think, but it can monitor and report things about itself. If you create smart technology, if you have smart technology and you have data because data is something that happened and when it happened, that's all it is, right? An event, something that happened and when it happened, a value and a timestamp. Let me ask you these questions. Okay. What is your digital strategy for that data? Yeah. And, and it, here's the, here's the mind blowing thing. The vast majority of people have nothing related to these four questions. They don't have a digital strategy. What is your digital strategy to monetize that data? Because by the way, it's the most important, valuable commodity in your business. Number two, how do you integrate that valuable data and information provided by your products into a common infrastructure? So the first time I looked at Version Dog, the first time I looked at Octoplant, they're, they're, and by the way, this is totally unpaid. I don't think they even paid me to speak. I think I just volunteered to do it. And correct me if I'm wrong, Josh or Cheryl. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I, I did not get paid to do that, that engagement. Um, and they're, they're not, they didn't sponsor this. This is totally unsponsored. When I first looked at their platform, when, I first, when they first reached out to me and I took a look at it, I was like, holy fuck. I mean, the second I sat there, you know, my experience with version control for PLC programs is really like Asset Center. Like if you guys, uh, any of you have ever used Asset Center by Rockwell Automation, I personally think it's the best product that they've ever made. I did an Asset Center implementation in the steel industry like in 2007, 2008. It's amazing, gr great program, but it's Rockwell specific, right? It's version control. It is backups and firmware updates for Rockwell PLCs, right? It's solution centric as opposed to technology driven. Um, when I looked at that platform, I thought, holy shit, the, the data that they collect, I asked them, first question I asked them was, what do you guys do with the data you collect on the version? Like, do you obfuscate it? Do you obfuscate this data and store it and then compare it across manufacturers and stuff? And they said, they don't do anything with it. They, they know they need to do something with it, but they, they don't. Right. And, um, and, and I think they want to, right. They're just like every other. OEMs, you know, every other software manufacturer. The difference is, is they have plans to provide value for their clients, you know, by turning that data into valuable information to make decisions. But if you're a manufacturer of software or hardware, or you're going to make some product, integrators love to do this, right? Integrators will, you know, the, one of the standard operating procedures for a systems integrator is they'll create like a, a starter kit, you know, or like a platform. Every integrator creates like their own little starter kit thing and they want to sell that either to other integrators or to their customers. And it's sort of the starting project to start solving their problems, right? It's got, a, it's got like a little package of scripts and it's got some unique capabilities. It's amazing to me how many integrators build MES systems, um, which I think is a great idea, but it's amazing how many do. But when I ask them, when I say, well, what's your digital strategy for the data that generates? And how do you integrate all that valuable data and information provided by that product into a common infrastructure for your customer? Fucking eyes glaze over. <laughs> there was like, it was never even a consideration. Oh, wait, you mean I'm going to share it outside of this platform? Oh, well, I think they support REST. I think they, you know, they could query, they, they could, you know, write a SQL query and collect the data or whatever. There was never a strategic decision on how to integrate that valuable data. Okay. So that's question number two. Question number three. And this is at the higher level. What data and information do your solutions generate that other nodes in the ecosystem can benefit from? Right. And number four, what data and information exists in the other nodes that your solutions can benefit from? Like what data does your MES system that you built, systems integrator, need to consume from other systems and how can you benefit from it? For 
for this software that I, I reviewed, this Octoplant version dog software, which is amazing stuff. I, I was really, really impressed. For me, if I'm as an architect, version control of PLC programming for the sake of version control of PLC, uh, PLC programs is not that important to me. It's important to maintenance managers, uh, engineering managers, controls engineers, right? Uh, oh, machine builders. That's important. But for me as an architect, it's not important. But what's really important are the trends across that. How does a program change over time if I can compare operational realities across, uh, against those changes? So what were the things that happened in the organization that drove the changes in the PLC programs? Moreover, what failures or what, or what capability gaps drove those changes? That's what's important to me as an architect. And that goes to the well, last two questions. What data and information do our solutions generate that other nodes can benefit from? And what data and information do I need from other smart things in the business um, that I can benefit from, right? Well, that platform that I looked at, this Octoplant version dog software by Ovesi MDT, it has the what. It has the what happened, okay? It has the what was the change, okay? But it doesn't have the why, it, and 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 it's limited to what someone maybe writes in comments. The reason we made change the change was this. But what you really want to be able to do is you want to be able to you want to look at the digital reality of the business at any given window and compare all the outcomes from that digital reality. What were all the reactions? Here is the antecedent. Here was the reality, and what were all the actions we took? to mitigate that antecedent, that reality. That is the real value in machine learning. The real value in machine learning is finding patterns in data we can't see with the naked eye, okay? And in order to do that, you have to be integrated into a common infrastructure so that data scientists can just run algorithms randomly against all data and see what patterns pop up. Then they come up with other hypotheses to test using supervised learning models.